coal plants can't adapt to that. Our gas plant can uh, go from zero to 100% in 10 minutes. So you use that to float. Now, we, the solar and wind is free, the, energy, the fuel cost, and that's your biggest cost. So we don't want to run the gas plant any more than we have to. So we thought that most summer days we are making more solar and wind than we will when the portfolio is up probably than, than our load will need. So if we can charge those batteries, and battery storage is still pretty short, but it's coming, that that will still offset less use on the fossil fuel plant, which is our goal. And eventually, as technology advances, the gas plant would just become a backup force. So uh, I, I, does that answer your question? I think so. I'm going to have to watch the replay. We are trying to figure out what's happening. So what's happening right now, my understanding, uh, is that there may be audio on the live stream. Uh, we're trying to figure out what's happening. But then the other piece is that they can hear you just fine, but they can't hear any of the council uh, <laughs> members. And so uh, City TV, we need to figure out what is going on with that. Um, we appreciate you. We really yes. do. No, we're happy to come answer yeah. questions. We got, you know, we're got, we heading in a really good direction. We're preparing for electric vehicles and charging stations and the homeowners, and you know, we'll be ready long before they get here. Well, and as always, I like, to, I like to leave you guys with some affirmations because we, we engage you at a very, very high rate, obviously. Um, and when you look at you know, what you guys are just you know, kind of doing you know, in, a, in, in the broad sense of the utility, um, I think you guys started to turn off uh, people for non-payment early September. I remember you guys did the two relief fairs before that, very well attended. Um, I thought that you know we were able to avert crisis for some people because of that. Yeah. So hats off to you for that. Um, I, you guys are everywhere in the community. As a matter of fact, this past Thursday, as part of the resource summit, yeah. uh, you guys had a, a very a strong presence. Um, you know, we're, you were engaging at a high rate, giving away uh, different goodies and things of that nature, but also hooking people up with energy efficiency programs and the like. Um, and then when you know when I engage, um, I'm always incredibly. I, I feel like you guys are. Um, you know, some of the most responsive service providers in the city. So I just want to thank you all for everything you do. Appreciate the questions and call thank us you. here anytime. Absolutely. We appreciate you. Oh, did we have another? I'm sorry. Sorry, since I have you guys here, I got one more question. I'm sorry. So is there any kind of in incentives to businesses, particularly in South Lansing, to uh, install electronic vehicle charging uh, stations? And, uh, and a second part to that, now that the infrastructure package just passed, you know, if you do, do you see those increasing by any chance? Uh, it looks like $7.5 billion is what's allowed, allotted for that. We uh, do have incentives, but they change all the time. So we encourage business owners to reach out to us. Uh, there's on our website, uh, it shows how to get to our strategic planning and uh, folks, and they'll tell you what incentives we have. Sometimes it's lights, uh, sometimes it's refrigerators, air conditioning, things like that. We're very aggressive right now working with landlords, showing them that you know, our, our records show about half the housing stock could, in Lansing could be rental. And sometimes a landlord doesn't care about the utility bill because he doesn't pay it. But when they understand that if you have, your resident has a lower utility bill because they take advantage of what we have, they're more likely to pay the, the rent. So uh, it's been well received. So we're targeting that market right now. And business owners uh, anywhere in town, if they reach out to us, uh, uh, we can tell them when as soon as we have and we'll work them through the paperwork to do it. So we get calls like that quite frequently and uh, the incentives plans change uh, depending on where the funding, where we can get the funding from. But uh, always happy to help somebody through that, do audits. And we do remind our folks that we can supply any customer with 100% renewable energy for a 10% premium. So if your electric bill is $90, $99, you get 100% renewable energy dedicated to you. And if you, you know, finances get tight, you can drop out of the program with 30 days notice. Used to be you had to sign up, but we'll let you right back out. So that's an incentive for our customers. All right. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. Fantastic. That brings us to uh, discussion uh, action. This is uh, item number six, letter D. This is a resolution for the Elected Officers Compensation Commission 2022 meeting schedule. If you remember earlier in the year, um, we actually worked to amend uh, Chapter 280, uh, which works to regulate uh, the EOCC in terms of their meetings. Uh, so they are actually meeting instead of every other odd numbered year, they're actually meeting every other even numbered year. Uh, we have some things that we have to do per the charter. Uh, and so my understanding is that their uh, board secretary, which is our very own Sherry Boak, uh, will present this item uh, before discussion and action. 
just briefly in the packet you have the ordinance from this year ordinance 1284 and you see that um, this body did pass an ordinance that stated they were going to meet on even numbered years commencing in 2022 um, and they must meet before february 21st as council or vice president hussein had stated so the resolution before you speaks to their first meeting occurring i believe it's february 16th or 17th 16th Um, we at this point would need a motion. I would um, move the resolution. All right, there is a motion on the floor for the discussion. All right, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All, right, all of those opposed, same sign. Fantastic. That brings us to discussion action item. This is letter six. Uh, I'm sorry, number six, letter E. This is a resolution repasses of Act 1, 2020 for Jerome Street and North Home Street. My understanding is we may have Andy Fidoa, yep, absolutely fantastic, who is a planner in our planning office. Um, and I believe we were supposed to have Greg Vanker from the city attorney's office to present as well. Fantastic, we appreciate you. Uh, if you guys recall, uh, we actually passed uh, Act 1 2020, uh, which obviously was last year. Um, and what we did by doing that is we actually vacated, uh, it was an agreement between us and, and Sparrow Health Systems. We vacated Jerome Street from Pennsylvania to North Holmes and then we vacated North Holmes from Jerome Street to Michigan. Um, and so what we are being asked to do today um, is to repass that act. My assumption is that we didn't meet some timelines, uh, potentially. Uh, and there's really two questions. We First of all, thank you so much uh, for being here, gentlemen. Uh, but two questions we would love answered. Number one, why um, the need uh, to repass? And then number two, what's the, what's the urgency here? Because what we're being asked to do, um, you know, for not only council, but also folks at home, we're being asked to not only vet this through Committee of the Whole, but to, to actually pass it through city council. And then there would be this kind of odd maneuver at the end of the city council meeting where we actually um, have this up for referral and then what we would do is place it on file. So again, need and then urgency. Take it away. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I'm happy to oh, answer. Oh, so, and then you have, fantastic. Go ahead, sorry about that. Uh, I'm happy to answer the, uh, I guess the why. I, I can't speak to the urgency, but um, the, when the resolution was passed and we do this with uh, any vacation resolution that has conditions upon it, and this one did, there were a number of things that Sparrow needed to do in order to actually uh, achieve the mm, filing and uh, outcome of vacation of that section of Jerome Street. Um, there's a six month expiration window, basically. They've got to accomplish these conditions before the six months pass. Um, and I think there may have been, and I don't know at what level, but uh, I think they didn't necessarily understand all the things that they had to get done, uh, and that didn't happen promptly. Um, they were working towards it, and then once everybody realized that these things had to get done, um, there was uh, a great flurry of activity. Uh, this began, I don't know, about a month ago. Anyway, um, everything, all of the conditions have been met except for the one condition was uh, how to achieve uh, maintaining a, uh, non-motorized uh, travel way along a portion of that vacate or along that portion of uh, drum that's being vacated uh, we've figured out how to do that now and i mean we know how that's going to happen um, but sparrow i think uh, wants to move forward we've got everything figured out uh, but we have missed that six month window it expired back in february of 2021 uh, and so uh, the resolution that's before you is literally identical to the one that was passed uh, last year in August. Um, everything is exactly the same. The conditions are the same. Uh, they just need to, uh, th that resolution has on its face expired. And so we can't go take it down to the register of deeds and record it and actually have the vacation take effect. So council has to repass the resolution um, in its uh, identical form. Uh, and then we can uh, uh, demonstrate that all the boxes have been checked and then um, file that with the register of deeds uh, and I and I think those last items will all be done taken care of this week I'll tell you that the um, there was some back and forth about what to do with the pedestrian uh, or the non motorized travel way because uh, they eventually intend to build a, a tower in the middle of Jerome Street is my understanding uh, and there's also rerouting of uh, pedestrian travelways, and Mr. Fedewood knows a lot more about that than I do, um, through down to Michigan Avenue, because 
there's a lot of reconstruction stuff that's happening on the roadways. Um, in the meantime, they will be giving us a permanent easement along that section of Jerome so that people can still, there's a connector path for non-motorized pedestrians, bikes, stuff like that. So that'll be maintained uh, up until anything changes from a development perspective. So I hope that answers the question as to technically why. Um, and then as to the urgency, I, I don't know necessarily. I, I know that Sparrow is Sparrow and they want to do stuff. Uh, and it took a long time and now they want to do it. Um, but I'll let Ms. Frito go. I can add a little bit to that. Um, Sparrow, ha we've had a few meetings with Sparrow Health Systems, uh, Greg and myself and uh, Andy Kilpatrick with um, Public Service, as well as BWL themselves and the Sparrow team. Uh, they have conveyed to us a, a, a few times that the urgency is mostly centered around um, safety concerns with their employees and conflicts that they sometimes have with um, protesters or people recording them along Jerome Street. Um, and then also the, uh, they need to start getting uh, get started on the construction of those proposed buildings that would be going along um, inside the old right-of-way of, -way of um, Jerome Street. So that is their stated urgency to get this going again. All right, we first have Councilwoman Spitzley, then we'll move to Councilman Betts. Okay. So um, what is the status of the current resolution right now? Do it, It's expired, so that means there is none, right? That's correct. Okay. Did this go before the planning board? Yes. Sorry, I should have added that as well. Yes, um, on no, last Wednesday, November 3rd, uh, planning board was briefed. They were told the entire situation, all um, our meetings, um, and that this is the exact same resolution and their conditions that they proposed last July, and none of the members expressed concern about that, and they would recommend reapproval of the vacation well okay so I got a couple questions about that and I know you know so was there a public comment on the resolution it was under or a yes or no, yeah no okay and did they vote on the resolution they did not vote okay well for council we receive you know our recommendations from from planning via vote so I have a problem with that I also have a problem at this point if the resolution, if the resolution expired, it's therefore gone. So what are we voting on? That's the first thing. And we don't we have to go back through public comment on this? I mean, the resolution is no more. So the procedure is a resolution comes before us. We can either refer to committee or not, but we have a public comment on this. So are we not having public comment on this or what's going on? From so when when we did the analysis in law, we looked at the fact that planning board has heard the substance uh, uh, in terms of a, an Act 33 review. They heard the request. They heard from all the affected departments and or agencies and or uh, uh, entities, uh, so BWL, public service, everybody, uh, and they made their recommendations and all of that information is exactly the same. So although the resolution is gone, uh, it's not so much yeah. It's more that it expired under its own terms, yeah. um, but the substance is identical. So from a compliance standpoint, uh, nothing, nothing has changed. It's still Act 1 of 2020, um, and to be perfectly honest, we had considered uh, bringing forth a resolution to essentially renew Act 1 of 2020 and just extend that deadline. Um, but well, that, that wouldn't have been a good idea either. So, but my, my issue is, okay. is that you know, procedurally, procedurally for council, I mean, there's no resolution, you're bringing this here, you're asking us to vote on it and move it through, but we have a procedure that we have to go through. I'm really concerned, you know, and, and let's back up the truck a little bit. I totally support what, this, what Sparrow's doing, I do, um, and I totally support, you know, I supported the vacation, but this is a procedure issue for me, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of crazy about procedure. You know, it was not voted on by the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission did not put it out for public comment. And we can even step two steps back. There is no resolution. So a, a new resolution, in my mind, should have been brought forward. It should have been, and, and it could have been a perfunctory vote by planning, and then sent to council 
and then we we have to put it out for public comment. I don't. I I'm very uncomfortable because to me it's a slippery slope. I'm very uncomfortable with us putting forth a resolution and just kind of waving it through a resolution that's been expired, and now we're going to say. We're just going to vote on it because everything's the same. If that's the case, we can do that with anything, with any resolution that comes comes down the pike and that it's expired, and and just say, oh well, it's expired. We'll just bring it through without having public comment. I, I'm very very troubled by this. Hi, right. I'm Betts. Thank you, Vice President Hussein. Um, I'm uncomfortable with this uh, for a multitude of reasons. Um, and I'd like to bring those up with this council before we uh, all make our decision here. Um, first off, um, the union protesters who are pro protesting on Jerome Street um, are union activists who are fighting for better pay and better working conditions. And for them to come to this council and ask for us to rush this thing through without any public comment so that they can get rid of the people protesting on Jerome Street is just astounding to me. This council supports our unions and we support our, our working men and women in this city. And so for us to be not following procedure specifically so that they can do this makes me extremely uncomfortable. Second, this is the first time that I have ever heard that they're building a tower there. Um, the Eastfield neighborhood, if you guys don't know, is just east of this area has been in constant contact every single month, has a meeting with their community liaison. And um, from my perspective, uh, Sparrow has not been sharing enough information. They've been pushing this stuff through. I don't know if you remember the uh, Holmes Road vacation in council out the next day. It's, it's you know, if, if the community isn't able to have a discussion with Sparrow, if we're not able to have a discussion with Sparrow, I'm not comfortable re-voting for this at this point. I want to have a public hearing. I want to have that conversation. And I think that um, if this council is willing, I would like to table this so that I can reach out to the neighborhood specifically and say, hey, just to let you know we're having another conversation and we know that we're building a tower on the spot. So uh, with that, I would motion that we table this until the next meeting. All right, so we know that a motion to table is non-debatable. There is a motion on the floor to, to table this item. That's not it's non -debatable. debatable. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. aye. We might have to do a roll call. You want to do it again? Okay. Go ahead and, go ahead and call the roll. On the issue. Yep, sir. No. No. Yes. Councilwoman Wood. I'm going to get you there, <laughs> Brandon. Thank you. What, what, what I am proposing is I would move that this be discharged from Committee of a Whole, be referred to Development and Planning Committee, and that the Development Planning Committee take it up and then bring it back to um, Council. So with that, that's my motion. There is a motion to discharge from Committee of the Whole to Development and Planning. Is there further discussion? Sounds great, thank you. Councilman Jackson. Um, didn't I hear that Development and Planning heard this? Is my first question. No. no? And if we know that, well, I guess we don't know, but if it's likely to get to a public comment here, why don't we just put it for that? I'm sorry, what was that last part? Why don't we Why don't we just set it for a public hearing, just since it sounds like there's some urgency, but instead of going through the committee, uh, just set it for a public hearing. Can I, can I? Uh, sure, I Councilwoman Spitzley. It went to the, it, it, they, it discussed it at the planning board, but the planning board did not vote yay or nay on this. So, you know, for council, we get our we get our recommendations and our information based on a, re a referral from the planning board. How they refer is through voting. They didn't vote on this. Yeah, they did not vote on this, and so I, you know, 
nor was there any kind of public comment, yes, which there normally know. is. Yeah, and which there normally is. So that didn't happen either. And so they didn't vote. So if, if this is referred back to development and planning, though, I will be reaching out. We, I think we need something from the planning board that says that they are okay with this. And so that folks know, Councilman Spitzley is the chair of development and planning. Yeah. And to remind folks, there is a motion on the floor for the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes. We appreciate you guys being here. That brings us to... Are we close session? All right, this is item number seven. Other, we only have one uh, on the agenda, is that, and that is the issue of the closed session. Councilwoman Wood. Um, thank you, Vice President Spadafore. Pursuant to, um, I would move in to, to go into closed session. Pursuant to MCL 15.286E, um, I hereby move that we recess into closed session to consult with the city attorney in connection with the following specific pending litigation. An open meeting would have a detrimental uh, financial effect on the litigation or the settlement position of the City of Lansing uh, defendants concerning these cases and City of Lansing uh, versus Purdue Pharma. Thank you. Clerk, would you take the roll, please? Councilmember Hussein? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Councilmember Spitzley? Yes. Councilmember Betts? Yes. Councilmember Jackson? I'm sorry, Councilmember Jackson? Councilmember Garza. Yes. Uh, motion carries five one. No, there's only five. There's six here. The vote was five one to go into closed session. Okay. So then the motion fails to go into closed session. Motion fails. I'm up for a reconsideration. All right, there's a motion to reconsider. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, on the reconsideration. Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Oh. Absolutely, Councilman Jackson. Okay, so I've consistently over the last few years been anti-closed meeting just because I feel like I'm a public elected person and everything that I do related to it should be in theory in public. I understand that the law allows for some discussions is there any real urgency city attorney this is extremely urgent and involves great financial resources for the city of lansing uh discussion in open this is consulting with your attorneys uh concerning major litigation and <clears throat> if this is done in public where the press and every uh, opponents have the opportunity to hear strategy it could have a detrimental financial effect on the city of lansing that's the reason we're asking that we do this in closed session if there is a decision that comes out that's going to be done in open session i guess just to the first part of my question and the only part is is there an urgency like with the case where we had to do it this week instead of next week so i don't have to cave in just to you know do something urgent which i'm willing to do but if there's no urgency that's my question i couldn't hear through the plastic here but i i think i got the sense of what you you mentioned there is an urgency in terms of timing there have to be there has to be a decision of this body by a certain date before the beginning of the year and that would be done in open session Councilwoman uh, Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I understand that you've been consistent not allowing, you know, for not voting for open session, but part of our responsibility as council people here is to hear what Jim Smirka has to say and our attorneys have to say so that we can make the best decision possible for the city of Lansing residents. And if it does have a detrimental financial effect on settlement, you, me, other attorneys know, you know, we, we always have settlement conversations that are between the client and the attorney. This is no different. And so I would ask that you reconsider so that we can understand what's going on and make the best decision for the city of Lansing residents. Councilman Jackson. For the reason of the urgency and, you know, the 
playing ball and all that, I will cave in and vote for a closed session. Clerk, would you take the roll, please? Councilmember Hussein? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Councilmember Spitzley? Councilmember Betts? Yes. Councilmember Jackson? Councilmember Garza? Yes. Motion carries 6 0. We will come back. We will reconvene after uh, the closed session. Uh, we'll be back shortly. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go ahead and reconvene the Committee of the Whole meeting for November 8th, 2021. Uh, before we actually adjourn uh, for the evening, we are going to take five minutes before starting the City Council meeting for tonight. Uh, so let the record reflect at 7.06 uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.